Why, hello there. Today is March 26th, 2015. I'm Blake, and you're looking at a status update for Suburban Dot Farm, our little homestead here. Take you around uh, the yard, see what we've been up to, as well as uh, go over some really exciting things coming up in the very near future. Um, here you can see this is more or less just turned into a large compost pile. One thing I've learned manually watering is a pain in the butt big pain in the butt so over the course of the next few weeks we're actually going to be installing our valve controller for the irrigation system so all of our garden beds will be on timers finally oh my gosh it's just only been a couple years and all but anyways with that being said because of how big of a pain in the butt this is I haven't really touched this garden bed at all outside of just tossing my landscape clippings in there. Um, a lot of our stuff is dying off. I actually haven't watered the garden in probably a couple of months. Um, it's kind of shocking how well everything did, even though it wasn't getting watered. Um, here's a little word of wisdom. Be careful when you're buying your plant starts from a nursery because if they're root bound, they're not gonna do well. So ultimately we ended up kind of killing off the tomatoes because they just weren't doing doing hot. Pulled a couple of them out and they were root bound like nobody's business. Um, celery's still doing okay. We've had a couple of rains. Um, I think that all comes down to good soil composition. Our soil is very sandy, so it retains water really well. Um, here we've got uh, various lettuce that I went, I let uh, go to bolt. Collecting the seeds off of those. Um, I'm gonna be using those, giving them those away to some people um, on the website, as well as our chive onions. Let them go to bolt. Got some lettuce that's ready to harvest. Again, haven't watered in two, three months. There's still plenty of carrots that randomly sprung up. Um, here's a lesson that I learned this season, and that is petunias do not go well in a garden. As you can see, they pretty much just took over that whole bed there. So I think what we're gonna do instead moving forward is uh, I'll show you a little planter that we have over there. I'm gonna get a big, some big clay pots and store, uh, put the petunias in there. So that way they can kind of overflow, get a couple different colors in there to look real pretty. Um, some more lettuce going to bolt. Those ones are about to flower. And then peppers. Try to play some triage with these guys. Um, rescue them from some frost. It didn't seem like they're doing too well. So more or less this whole bed's gonna probably get a full turn as soon as we're done with the whole uh, timer project. Jalapenos, uh, they too got some pretty bad frost damage, but they're they're actually doing okay. So I might, might end up transplanting him over to one of these beds. So I did a big no-no. I know, I know, everybody can, can complain, but I did, uh, this backyard looked pretty atrocious. So I ended up putting some pesticide, or I'm sorry, some herbicide out here to kill off a bunch of the dandelions and stuff like that that had kind of going throughout the, uh, the yard. Um, Here's the peach tree. If you remember from previous videos, this was a twig, literally a twig. I got it on the discount rack at the nursery. It was like 15 bucks. Now this thing is huge and it's super healthy. It's got massive amounts of fruit. Um, after this project from this weekend, I'll come through and do some thinning probably next weekend. So we'll have a pretty good harvest come, uh, come a few months out. Here's the palm, my Mexican fan palm that randomly sprouted in our, our yard as a weed. I'm gonna be moving him up to the front yard here pretty soon as well, as soon as we get that irrigation timer fixed. Lemon tree, doing well. It's fruited, or I'm sorry, flowered. And it looks like quite a bit of fruit has actually set. So we'll be going, do, going through and doing some thinning for that as well, um, as soon as it kind of fills out a little bit better. I think it's kind of reached its optimal height. What I'm gonna do is now let it fill out to a fairly large ball and keep it at that length. So that way I don't get too out of control. I can keep it pruned and all that kind of fun stuff. Put down some fertilizer a few weeks back. As you can see a whole bunch of new growth coming in off the trees. These guys are doing phenomenal. Repainted the trunks, had some sunburn starting to show, specifically on the, the daisy mandarin. Um, so I got a fresh coat of some, some whitewash on there, kind of protect them from the sunshine. Um, Daisy Mandarin also doing really well. This guy kind of re resurrected him from 
near death. And it looks like he's he's coming back pretty good. Good amount of new growth. The uh, had a rainstorm a few weeks back that kind of flipped over some of my leaves and whatnot, but they're kind of a funny shape. I'll probably end up tr you know trimming that offshoot there, let it come up a little bit more, fill out you know kind of a a big circle around right in here. But these are some of the potters I was talking about about with the petunias. I'm gonna be filling putting petunias in these things, I like that kind of Greco-Roman looking style. Valencia orange, also doing really well. Got plenty of new growth coming in on this as well, but this didn't get too many flowers this year. I don't know if I was a little late on the fertilizer for it or what, but it doesn't seem like it's gonna have as good of a crop as it did last year, we'll see. The mandarin and the grapefruit though, those are just rocking. Uh, let's see what we got here. So again, haven't watered this in months. Um, the broccoli, it went to bolt really fast, a lot faster than I was expecting. So the good thing about heirloom varieties is, you know, you can actually save the seeds that come out. It's got a little ways to go still. No seeds just yet. However, you can see just the amount of seed pods that are on this thing. It's covered in them. So I'm gonna have probably more seeds than I'll, I'll ever use. I'll probably end up giving a good chunk of them away on the, on the website. So keep an eye out for that and I will absolutely hook you up. Here's the kale. You can see some carrots popping up in between. All of it just doing really, really well. Now again, I'm kind of new to the whole kale thing, but my understanding is you can actually come in and trim off just side shoots here. And this will actually almost make like a tree, like a really big, long, almost tree kind of looking thing that you can get, you know, a few years worth of kale off of just a, a few single plants. So I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with that yet. Probably end up harvesting the whole thing as I do a reset for this bed. But as you can see, there's plenty of kale to go in the juicer. I have lettuce just randomly sprouting in my rocks. I let it grow and that'll make good salad as well. Cilantro. We ended up taking that out. The spinach didn't do too well. It seems like the cilantro came through a little too quick and as such blocked out the sunshine hitting the spinach. So, you know, kind of a note for next year, probably not put the spinach in between the cilantro or at least give the spinach a little bit of a start before I start the cilantro. And then next we've got more lettuce. That's that. So you can see this wood structure here. That's actually going to be mimicked on the other side of the yard, on the other beds, almost looks like a compost heap right now. But what I'm gonna do is uh, be able to lean two by fours, or I'm sorry, two by threes up against that, put my shade cloths, put my you know, plastic in the winter time for frost protection and so on. So let's talk a little bit about what we're doing tomorrow and over the course of the next month. So as you can see, we've got some, nails kind of poked around that was for my measurements and such for the so you got one right there and another one right there but i'm going to be putting sprinkler heads you got right there right there another one right over there right there right there basically going to have sprinklers as part of this whole timer project over there so tomorrow, step one, is we're getting a tiller. We're actually gonna come out and completely till this entire section here. I might do a little bit of something different with the stonework, have it maybe flip over so it's facing upwards like it is on this side. Namely because with the weed eater, it just chews through my, my edger line. So that rough edge, it just, yeah, it's just not a good setup. So I'm gonna flip those around have those be facing up all the way through past the trees. And then once we hit the melon patch, that's when they'll, you know, basically do what it did over there and, you know, kind of come up and twist over and then stay this shape. And then I'll probably end up putting another row on here eventually, just so it looks a little bit more form specifically for, you know, hey, this is another garden bed. Kind of looks a lot, almost out of place. And then similar to what I had done over here, You know, those are all gonna get replaced with the same kind of color as that. 
and then we're going to do another one right here instead of a berm it's actually going to be just a another row of block to kind of section off the melon patch so yeah tomorrow 5 a.m we'll be out here we're going to till this entire thing we're going to level it off do some tamping put some water on it over the course of the next few weeks that way it's nice and settled and then get the trencher we'll be trenching out to each of our sprinkler heads put in the timers and then the entire garden beds will be on uh, timers as well kind of the last little piece in the project that we'll also be bringing out um, so i gotta have an electrician come out we're going to run a trench it's kind of an idiot when i put in the water main i didn't realize you know, exactly what I needed to do, but we're gonna have electrical line come all the way through here, there, and then shoot up. But I'm gonna have them lay two lines. And what's gonna go right here is a switch, either on this post, or maybe there, or there. What we're gonna do is basically put a light switch. So that way we can have two to three separate light settings out here. As you can see, I have no floodlights whatsoever for the yard. So when it's uh, nighttime, you can't really see anything out here. Obviously, that's not too ideal if you want to be having picnics in you know, your nice, beautiful backyard, plucking salads from your uh, from your garden and whatnot. So those are coming, um, as well as maybe some, some outlets for the Christmas lights and that kind of stuff that'll go up. Probably plop those up there. Another fun little thing here, because of all the uh, the weeds that I had in the backyard, it attracted a lot of aphids. Now the natural byproduct of that is it kind of became one of the favorite feeding grounds for the ladybugs. So there was a blast of just millions of ladybug larvae out here. They were all over the place. You can see some praying mantis see, or, uh, eggs there. But I mean, these ladybugs are going through their metamorphosis all over the place so that'd be really good for the garden and hopefully I won't have too many issues long term with you know aphids and whatnot in the uh, in the garden because I've got a good deal of uh, ladybugs now but so that's that I'll keep you guys posted I'm gonna try and snag as much video as possible as we're doing all this this heavy lifting out here but hopefully within within a month we're gonna have a lawn down timers on the garden full reset on the crops and you know start start going from there thanks for watching feel free to comment subscribe share you know do all the fun things that you do with youtube videos but uh cheers